Periphery is an American progressive rock band formed in Washington, D.C. in 2005. Over the years, the band has proved to be one of the prime movers of the so-called gent genre, although many would simply label them progressive metal or progressive metalcore. The band has released six studio albums, and all of them were self-produced by the band members themselves. Their latest album, Periphery 4, Hail Stan, was just released earlier this month, and they become quite creative with their video uploads on social media to promote this album. There's a full documentary about the album's creative and recording process on their YouTube channel, and more than that, they also run their own label now. In this video, we'll talk about their discography, the band members, and a few background stories to get you up to date with the band. Let's take a closer look. Gent is a subgenre of metal music, a subgenre that takes a lot of its distinct sounds from the Swedish metal band Meshuga and more specifically guitarist Fredrik Tordendal. What defines the genre is its rhythmic complexity, polyphonic and groove-based riffs that are often played in a stop-start motion at dizzying speeds. There's also quite a bit of virtuoso soloing going on here with guitars equipped with seven strings or more. Distortion and palm muting are also sounds and techniques that go a lot around in this music. Misha Mansour was the person who first came up with the idea of creating Periphery in the first place. Back in the mid-2000s, he slowly built a presence as a musician online by building and sharing music on SoundClick, SevenString.org, and the Meshuga and John Petrucci forums. He would continuously develop his skills as a producer, guitarist, and overall musical innovator with his solo project Bulb and many of Periphery's songs started out as Bulb demos. Misha has also been involved in a series of side projects over the years, such as Haunted Shores, Four Seconds Ago, and A Man, Not A Machine. But ever since Periphery became a more serious thing, that's where he would spend the most of his time and energy moving forward. In the beginning, the band went through a series of lineup changes. Misha took on both the role as a drummer and guitarist to begin with, but since his most dedicated instrument was the guitar, he decided to outsource the drumming to someone more talented. That's when he got to know a local drummer by the name of Jason S. Berlin. He played with Misha for some time until he decided to move to Los Angeles and pursue different things. He was then replaced by Travis Orban. Now, from 2005 to 2009, there was a heavy circulation of vocalists, too. Jake Veridica, Casey Sable, and Chris Barreto all worked with Misha as vocalists at some point. The band started touring heavily in 2008 and onwards, supporting bands like Dream Theater, The Dillinger Escape Plan, Animals as Leaders, and many others. In 2009, the band started to generate buzz around their debut album that was set to release in April of 2010. They'd managed to get deals with record distributors in the US, Canada, Europe and Australia and everything was ready to go. What surprised early fans though was that they changed the vocalist during the last minute. On January 20th, the band uploaded an album sampler to the internet with vocal samples performed by Spencer Sotelo. Apparently, there were personal differences between Misha and Chris and disagreements about the music they'd made. And during one interview, Misha referred to him as a diva. The band released their self-titled debut on April 20th, 2010, and it reached number 128th on the Billboard Top 200, as well as number 2 on the Billboard Heat Seekers chart. Other than scoring a good position on the charts and selling a great amount of records, the band went on a big tour across the world to promote their music even more. Although it was generally a successful tour, it wasn't without its challenges. 
Spencer Sotelo had a case of bronchitis that made it impossible for him to complete some of the shows. Jake Bowen managed to break his finger after a fall during the first week of the tour, rendering him unable to join the band again until the end of the tour. In 2011, guitarist Alex Boyce left the band and was temporarily replaced by Mark Holcomb and Adam Nolly Getgood until they could find a permanent replacement. It seemed that Holcomb was a fitting replacement though, since the band shortly after announced that they were gonna work with him in a more permanent fashion. Get Good also became a more stable part of the group, taking the role as bass player and multi-instrumentalist. After a rewarding European tour in January of 2012 as an opening act for Dream Theater, the band decided to get back into the studio to rework some of Misha's Bulb demos. They also started to work on completely new material during this time as well. Misha was interviewed by an Australian magazine during the creative process of this album. And to the interviewer, he explained how for many years, he wanted to create a concept album. Periphery 2, This Time It's Personal, was made available for streaming on YouTube on June 28th, 2012. They went on what they called the Summer Slaughter Tour in 2012, and from that period onwards, Jeff Holcomb became a stand-in bass player. He just happened to be a filmmaker as well, and got the opportunity to make some documentaries about the band, as well as the music video for their song Ragnarok. Vocalist Spencer Sotelo hinted that another release was on its way on Twitter back in 2013. They had already revealed that they were working on a project called Juggernaut, their third full-length album. While the fans were waiting, Misha, Mark and Jake all released their signature guitar pickups, making their sound more available to their fans and fellow musicians. While the fans waited even more, Chris Barreto made a surprise appearance during their last show of the This Tour Is Personal tour. Chris's and Misha's working relationship ended in a feud during the recording of the band's debut, but they eventually managed to put the past behind them as this concert showed. I guess it was well fitting to call the tour This Tour Gets Personal. Maybe Misha wanted to make things good between them when he came up with it in the first place. Who knows? On January 28, 2014, the band released their second studio EP called Clear. This was the first concept recording that the band had ever created. But instead of tying the concept to a story in the lyrics, it was tied to the different members' individual writing processes. Each band member got the job of being the creative director, so to speak, of their own song, making the material more personalized and varied. The only exception to this rule was the first song on the record. There's a melodic motif in Overture that returns in every single song and makes the EP much more cohesive. As Jake Bowen described it, Clear is an experiment to explore all of the different writing styles in the band. It's rare when you have a band where every member is capable of writing and producing music. With each member controlling their own track, this recording enabled us to go down any path we chose in terms of style and sound. Every track also contains a melodic theme established in Clear's intro track, Overture. This common thread links all of the songs together even though they all sound wildly different. After Clear, the band got back into the studio to finish the Juggernaut project. This was something Misha had been working on ever since the infancy of the band. The project had originally included songs like Icarus Lives and Jetpacks Was Yes, songs that were used for their debut album instead. Juggernaut was intended to be released no more than six months after Periphery 2 as a part of a double album. But because of their hectic touring schedule, they had to push the release date further into the future. 
they didn't even start to record the album before mid-2014. Now the end product was a double album, Juggernaut Alpha and Juggernaut Omega. They were released on January 27th, 2015 and debuted at number 22 on the Billboard Top 200. A couple of years later, the members stated on social media that another album was in the works, and this was Periphery 3, Select Difficulty. This was released about one and a half year later, on July 22nd, 2016, and the band was nominated for Best Metal Performance for their song The Price Is Wrong. Adam Nolly Get Good decided to leave the band on August 3rd, 2017 because he wanted to focus more on his business and his family from that moment onwards. More changes came along in 2018 when the band ended their contract with Sumerian Records and decided to create their own record label, Three Dot Recordings. Now, on the 5th of April this year, the band released Periphery 4, Hail Stan. And as you can see on their YouTube, Instagram and Twitter, they've been very diligent in promoting the album. They made almost a 50 minute long documentary about the recording of the album. There's a guitar playthrough, some facts videos, and overall they seem to be quite creative with their videos and their overall promotion. So, it's pretty cool. Check it out. These guys actually understood the power of video content on social media as artists way before many other bands jumped on the idea. They squeezed in time to record videos of their studio recordings as far back as in 2009 with their debut album. Now I want to say that if you're into heavy and complex rock and metal music, then you should definitely check out Periphery. Misha Mansour himself was a big fan of Mashuga and Dream Theater, and they do share a lot of musical commonalities with those bands, in addition to bands like Between the Buried and Me, Tesseract, and Animals as Leaders. So if you're into that type of music, consider giving Periphery a listen. Now, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to get notified about new videos that I'm coming out with every single week, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button. Or if you consider yourself a hardcore fan and you want to get my videos at all costs, then make sure you click the link below and you'll get access to my videos over on Messenger. So that's it. Until next time, cheers.